Hi, my name is Franco Romero, and I am actually in Minnesota. I, uh, my story, though, uh, begins many years ago when I was actually still in South America, Colombia. Uh, my ND actually occurred when I was six months old, so it's a little bit of a different story because the things that I'm going to talk about are things that actually came to me 15 or 16 years later when I was a teenager in the form of visions and dreams that I was starting to get from basically nowhere because at that point I hadn't been told that I had had a near-death experience when I was an infant. But what had started to happen in my mid-teens was that I was actually starting to have these kind of lucid dreams where I saw myself in a hospital and it wasn't a hospital in, in the States. It was a hospital somewhere, somewhere different in, in somewhere where you would probably equate to South America. There were small clinical hospitals. And I saw myself in this one particular area of the hospital where in a room that I was walking into, I saw my mother and she was rather young at the time with a bunch of family members around her and they were all sort of focused on this one little baby that was in an incubator of sorts and there was this connection that I had to the baby but I didn't know at the time when I had my first set of visions that that baby was actually me. It took a, a series of dreams and visions for me to sort of make the connection that that child was actually me and that I was experiencing something that was way beyond just the dream because I could feel feelings and I could feel emotions and I could sense thoughts and particularly I was really connected to my mother. I could sense everything that she was going through at the time when they were in that room and I could sense that the baby was actually in, in a real serious situation and so I want to just kind of take a pause there because when this happened 15, 16 years later and I started having these dreams and visions. I remember that at that time that there were things about my past that, that I really didn't have much recollection for, but these things were so vivid to me that, that to me, I was actually in the situation of, of that room. So as this dream was unfolding, I could sense that this child was, was dying. And my mother would later on tell me that she had actually brought me to the hospital because at that time I was having some problems breathing and she just thought it was a natural sort of cold or flu or something. But as soon as she got me to the clinic hospital, they immediately realized that I was having very difficult, I was having a very difficult time breathing. And so they put me in this incubator and they decided to keep me for observation overnight. It didn't take very long. She said probably about two or three hours and my situation took a turn for the worse. And in that time, I couldn't, I, I really wasn't able to breathe very well. And the doctors realized that I had probably acquired some sort of pneumonia, bronchitis or something that was causing me to to have a, not only a hard time breathing, but basically my, my organs and my body was starting to shut down and they really couldn't do much about it. So they, I recall being in the room with my mother and everybody was praying. She was a very devout Catholic. And I remember that the doc, one of the doctors came into the, into the room, took her out of the room and explained to her that literally that there was nothing that they could do. So they were asking her if it was okay to have the hospital chaplain minister come in, be with them, pray for a little while, and then basically give me my last rites. I remember that at that time I was standing next to her and she was sitting on the bed near the incubator. And I remember that she had basically disconnected from that conversation. The energy in the room changed. She wasn't there anymore. Her physicalness was there, but I could sense that she was somewhere else. And almost like in a hypnotic state, she got up and she decided she went back into the room, got her stuff, went out. And rather than staying in the hospital room, being with me by my side in, the, in basically the last few hours of my life, 
she decided to go to a church that was about a couple of blocks away. She walked over there, and when she got really close to the church and she could see the entrance, she got on her knees and crawled into the church all the way through to the front to the altar and started to pray. And all this time in my vision dream, I could see everything that she was going through. I could feel everything she was going through. And when she got to the altar, I remember how she actually got into sort of a meditative state. She wasn't praying like we would normally see praying when you're in that situation. She wasn't pleading for my life. It was as though she was actually giving thanks and gratitude and appreciation for the short time that I was actually with her during this life. She was so grateful for just the six months of having me that she didn't have any way of even knowing how to, at that moment, even ask for anything more. And I remember that when she was going through this, it was so intense that all of a sudden the, the energy shifted again inside the church. And she was shown visions of me as I, as I grew up and became an adult and a father and a, and, a, and a responsible son and all these things. And she didn't even know that she was going through this, but she remembers feeling this sense of, of, of more gratitude and love for the fact that she was able to see this, even though she knew that by the time she went back to the hospital, she was probably going to get the news that I had died. And at that moment, she felt this enormous love and comfort and peace. And she realized that no matter what the news was, she was going to be all right. And then I was going to be all right. So at that moment, she got back up, walked back to the church. I mean, walked back through the church and then went to the hospital. And when she got there, she was greeted by doctors and family members and people were crying. But the thing was, is that they weren't crying because I had died. They were crying because everything came back in the time that she was gone my vitals went back my organs were were back to normal and everything seemed to be basically on the right track the doctors came up to her and said we don't really understand what happened here but you have to also remember this is a small community in south america and very catholic devout people they just chalked it up as a miracle and left it at that and so for her her faith was so deep that she just went on with her life. But there was a second part to this that I didn't actually experience right away. But in the series of all these visions and dreams, I started to have another vision and another dream where I crossed over from that instance where I wasn't in the hospital and I wasn't in the in the church with her anymore. I was actually crossing through and I went into this massive area that looked like a like a desert. And I remember that I was looking down and I could see that there were these people, there was this old gentleman and he was very decrepit. He was, he looked like he hadn't eaten. He was impoverished and he was looking at me and he had his hand sticking out. And when he looked at me, I could realize, I realized that he wasn't looking at me. He was looking through me. And when I turned around, I saw this enormous light. It was beautiful. It was like, it was like, easily 10 times bigger than the sun. And I remember thinking, why isn't this light hurting me? Why am I able to see right into it? It wasn't burning my eyes or anything. And when I turned back, that man became this little boy, same situation. And he was reaching out. And when again, I looked back and this time the light was right on top of me. And when it got really close to me, I could feel every, every cell in my body vibrating. It was it was really unique because when I tell this part of the story, I really want people to understand that it wasn't like I was feeling every bit of my body vibrating as a whole. I was experiencing it as if I were every little cell in my body. I could experience it as if I was the cell thirsty for this light. It was such an enormous, beautiful, enrapturing light. It, there's no words to really describe and I know that other people have talked about this, but there's just no words to describe the feeling that you get when it starts to go through you. It literally takes over the entire essence of your soul becomes this light. And when I got into the light, I remember being greeted by a couple of silhouette images. It became really clear to me that the light 
wasn't just this big light. It was like I could sense all of these individual entities that I would equate to as like family members. They didn't have a face. They didn't have really defined characteristics of a body. They were more like silhouette lights. And I remember that I could, I knew who they were. I knew that I had experienced my whole eternity with these people, with these beings, and they knew me too. And I remember that one of them came up to me and hugged me. And when they hugged me or when it hugged me, the other ones hugged me as well. And my whole body exploded. It, was, it wasn't though I had a body, like a physical body, but it, my body was etheric. It was, it was very translucent. And it just completely exploded into what I could, the only way I could describe it is at that moment, I became fully aware of what it was like to be one with everything. And at that precise moment, I was looking around in this orb and I saw just this infinite stream of, of lights. And those infinite streams of light were actually individual, what I, would, what I now know as supreme beings. And it went on forever. I mean, I just stood there and I just, it went on forever. And the crazy thing was, is that I felt like I knew them all and they knew me. And I remember at one point, and I don't always talk about this, but I, but I, I do now because it's become very essential in the way that I view life now. They, I remember being in this moment and this moment lasted for a long time. This reunion, I call it, was, was, was there for quite a bit and I didn't want to leave. There was no way I wanted to leave. It was the most beautiful thing I had ever experienced. And, and so this entity, there was this sense of a, another presence around me. And this presence kept insisting that I become more cognizant, more aware of what I was experiencing. And it kept telling me, what do, what do you see? And I looked around and I'd be honest, at first I didn't even care to see anything. It wasn't visually seeing nothing. You don't see things with your eyes. You, you feel things is the best way to describe it. And I remember that it became so insistent that I looked around and it was at that point when I realized that what I was being surrounded by was all of these individual beings that had actually come together as a collective to form this bigger light in other words at that moment and by the way at that moment i moved this this thing that was around me grabbed me it felt like it grabbed me even though there wasn't really a hand there and it whisked me back and i all of a sudden went through this tunnel beautiful lights it was like full of lights and then on the outside of those lights you, you could see celestial bodies and then I landed back in my body. The odd thing was, is that I landed back in my body 15 years later. So I was experiencing this moment as if it were real time, but I was actually in a linear sense, experiencing it much later in time. But what I saw and what they wanted me to see was that this, this enormous light that people talk about this thing that we re relate to as God, typically, it wasn't that this thing created itself and then created us individually as an expression of itself, which is the way that we've been told, if we're even told that, because most of the time we're not even told that. We're told that we're disconnected from everything, especially from God. We're, we're, we start out life behind the eight ball, so to speak. But that this being was actually created because of a collectiveness that came together, individual supreme beings that came together collectively to form this thing we now call God. And that just changed the narrative of my life tremendously because here I was throughout my life thinking that I was basically this insignificant little thing of a being and then being shown that we are all supreme beings that we all came together to create the oneness that we call god so anyway i came back into my body i had these images and these dreams for weeks months through all of these weeks and months i i i went back to the one person that was in my dream the whole time and that was my mom 
And I took a gamble and I told her exactly what I had seen. I told her what she had gone through. I gave her very detailed images of what happened and what she was thinking and praying, things that nobody would have known other than her. And she realized that something more than just my near-death experience had happened that, that day, that, that there was something more miraculous that had happened. There was something supernaturally happened that I was able to somehow see everything 15 years later in life and start connecting the dots. Well, she encouraged me to talk to more people about it. In particular, she wanted me to talk to some therapists, but I was like, no, thanks. I didn't want to do that because I had seen actually from my own personal experience. Anyway, that also became a reality to me. It, it wasn't easy, but in time, I realized that all of these things that I thought were not normal were extremely normal. And so all the years of going through a crisis, the spiritual crisis that led me down very dark areas of depression and, and even suicidal thoughts, that those things were actually ways that were trying, ways in which to try to wake me up, to show me that there was something more. And if I could just see through that heavy energy of emotional stress, I could start to see that there were actually I, there were actually clues to help me remember and, and to wake up at a time in humanity when this is what everybody's doing. Since I've come out of my own spiritual closet is the way that I have defined this. I wrote a book called The Closet Spiritualist. It shows people how I went through the process. And what I always tell people is that I, it's a great way to show you what not to do. The, the stumbling and fumbling the trials and tribulations that I went through to find out the truth about myself, this, you know, about being a, a superior being and, and being here for a purpose that is which, which is what we're all looking for. Um, that is a great start and it's a guide. And I always tell people, look at that as a way to start remembering who you are and to do that, you know, you can go on my, on my website, which is the closet spiritualist.com and you can, you can read a little bit more about my story and and about and pick up the book. And it also shows you other things that were shown to me that are important in our awakening. We're in a very, very unique time in human history. Much, much of what is written is actually coming to pass now. And it's not to, meant to scare people. It's meant to get them excited. This thing about the end of times is actually here now. And the thing that I re recall when I went through my near-death experience is that those were the messages that we have to we have to adhere to and know why we're here individually. So you you know, I teach students how to go deep within themselves to get out of the amnesia, thinking of who they are, realize that they are supreme beings, basically that they are God. And then I walk them through how to, maneuver through the simulation that we call life because this is a simulation that we're experiencing and then to wake up wake up so that they can be the light not only their light to their to their own selves but the light of the world which has been prophesized by so many sacred books and so many sacred traditions for thousands of years it's happening now so that's what i work with people it's called the way of the inner child and it's a very simple technique to wake up. And so many people who are watching channels like yours are just doing that. Like this channel is helping people to wake up, but they need a little more guidance in most instances. But if you really look at what many of the sacred traditions and sacred books and teachers who have come here uh, are talking about, they're talking about a time when we, when we as humanity rise up to a level of consciousness where where we realize who we truly are and that's called god consciousness christ consciousness buddha consciousness krishna consciousness but it's an awakening that we never die we've been in a dream experiencing ourselves as god and that it's now time to take all of these learning experiences that we've had over thousands of years and apply them to the end here where we can wake ourselves out of one of the hardest tests we could ever go through, which is this three-dimensional reality and, and create a more utopic world 
Um, that's actually happening in the timelines that I've been shown. It's going to happen here in the next eight to 10 years. Um, it's not going to be thousands of years from now. The thing is that we always thought we were just waiting for something out there to happen. And what we didn't realize that all along we've been waiting for ourselves. It is us who will change the reality here because we're all divinity. We are so superior. We're so powerful that that is what happens at the end of times. So that's what's called heaven on earth, where you actually bring in that superiority of the divinity and you don't have to die to realize it. Because the one thing you realize when you die, in my instance, the moment you die and you separate from your body, you realize that you are divinity, that everything that you were experiencing was a dream. When the end of times comes, which is happening right now, you don't have to die to experience that anymore. You break the veil and everything that was once thought to be on the other side collapses into this reality and it becomes one again. That's what it was really meant by the end of times. And people will say, well, how is that possible? Everything's crazy right now. There is always that chaos before there is this enormous amount of peace and harmony that comes. And this is just a mirror. So what we have to realize is that this is the simulation of the mirror of how we experience our duality. But this will pass. And it's passing actually right now. I mean, it really is right now.